Now, this is a light bulb idea, and it goes on your head. Imagine cruising along on your deadly treadly with a helmet that indicates left and right just by tilting your head. Walter Wolmick is a Dutch designer who runs Studio Ludens and he's a visiting research fellow at RMIT's Exertion Games Lab. Sounds like they have a lot of fun there. Thanks for being with us, Walter. No worries. Thanks for having me. Now, look, I have to say working at a games lab sounds like pretty good fun. What's, what's a day in, in the office like there? What is a day in the office like? Well, I guess um, apart from talking to media and talking about what we do and uh, getting a lot of people excited about it, yeah. we, we build stuff. We build our own prototypes, like the helmet that you've seen. Um, we, um, we talk together about what the future of gaming and, um, and technology may look like. And we also write um, articles and papers to uh, summarize our findings and tell um, both business and, and other research about what we're doing. Um, yep. It sounds great. Now, you, I've seen a picture of the neon helmet Mm-hmm. Um, t- can you describe it to people who haven't seen it? And maybe you can even give us um, a website we can go to to have a look. Sure, of course. Um, well, if, if you go to www.exertiongameslab.org, uh, that's just one, one long word, um, then you can see the helmet also in action. And basically what it looks like is a normal bicycle helmet. Um, but as soon as the lights turn on, underneath the cover, you, you can actually see that it becomes a display and there's 104 LEDs underneath it which can shine in any color. So it, it is basically like a, um, a low resolution display on top of your helmet. And what we can do with that is that we can control each little light to make patterns of light or to draw a number or we can use it to make, um, uh, to make it light up in a certain speed. And we can use that to communicate uh, to let the helmet communicate to other people, uh, for instance, what you're doing or how you're feeling, or maybe you can use it consciously to tell something to other people. And the cycling is one example of that. Somebody upstairs when we were talking about it said, what if you were listening to mu- music and you started bopping and nodding your head and it looked like you were making a left-hand turn? <laughs> That's a very good point. Um, <laughs> We, um, uh, the example that, we, uh, that we've uh, given of uh, tilting your head to, to indicate, that is really meant as an example to get people thinking about mm-hmm. what it means to have a, a display on your helmet. So um, we've had a, um, a number of people saying that's a great idea, but we've also had people saying, oh, but there's, you know, I see an issue here, I see an issue there. And it's great because we actually think that, um, you know, this is the tip of the iceberg. I think that there's many possible applications for uh, cyclists, for skateboarders, for construction workers, and they all have their own kind of applications, uh, be it functional mm. or maybe for a way to express themselves. So the example of the nodding your head um, that may affect the indicator, that may be a bad thing when you want it to indicate, but maybe it's great if it actually starts to beat in the rhythm that you're, that you're beating your head so it becomes kind of an expression of you enjoying your music. Um, I'm, I'm just <laughs> seeing like one possible thing, but I really like to approach it as a, as a, uh, from a very broad angle and say, what could it do? Yeah, well, would, would it be able to tell um, uh, drivers what speed you were going at, for example? Yeah, that's one possibility. And um, uh, along the same lines, we've been thinking about um, a, a lot of cyclists use heart rate monitors to see how they are doing while they're cycling. Now, if we link that up to the to the helmet, we could actually make, make the helmet beat in the rhythm of the heart and maybe thereby make other people aware of, you know, you are a fragile human being there on a bike with a beating heart. And you know, maybe create some, some sympathy for what you're doing. If you see the, be- the heart beating really quick, like you're exercising, you're putting a lot of energy into, into your transportation. So, again, like that, um, um, I see many possibilities, and we actually want to try all of those with our prototype. Now, you've just made a prototype so far. It's not mm-hmm. available to buy just yet. Do you Go think, do you think uh, something along those lines, whether it's as complex as the one that you're talking about with all these various possibilities, do you think that um, some sort of simple uh, helmet using light for perhaps things like indicating and your speed, et cetera, mm-hmm. uh, could be developed and on the market soon? I definitely think it could. 
and um, I, I see two broad ways in which this could be developed. One is it's very application specific, so maybe I actually have only three lights on my helmet for, for indicating left, right, and braking. Um, and you know, you, you develop a product that just does that. But then on the, on the other hand, I can also imagine that you approach the helmet more as a little computer, just like your smartphone, and say, well, we put all these lights on there, but the application that is running depends on what the user wants to do with it. And maybe, maybe everyone can design their own program for it so that it's not up to us to determine what people yeah. should do with it, but they can use it as a platform for their own ideas. And what about using the helmet in construction sites, for example? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could work there. Um, we think that there might be great opportunities there, and uh, we're now starting conversation with, uh, with various people um, in the builders industry to understand what kind of challenges do they face on a construction site, what kind of opportunities do we have to use such a helmet to their advantage. And one thing we could imagine is using it um, as a form of communication, because the helmet is very visible, and sometimes it may be, uh, it may be loud at, at a construction site, and it may be far away from one another. So maybe we can actually use it if I nod my head. It can light up green to indicate that um, if you can't hear me, you can still See me. know that I meant yes or light up red when I, when I shake my head, just so you know uh, what I sent back to you. Yeah, look, it's fantastic stuff. Now, you've actually been wearing one in Melbourne. How are people reacting? Um, yeah, so I've, yeah, I've indeed been... Uh, I've indeed started to, um, to wear the helmet myself, and, and it's interesting. I, um, um, I'm, I'm basically my first... Uh, um, uh, user that is testing it, and I have some some uh, challenges sometimes controlling it. So that's very interesting. <laughs> I, I can I can I can already understand that m maybe I need to change the way that it actually uh, detects head movement. But on the other hand, it is really it is a really interesting feeling to be to be sending out these messages that people are not really expecting, but that they can still understand. Like a blinking light on the left or the right side is very typical for a motorbike or a car. So it's, it's kind of playful and functional at the same time. And um, fortunately, I haven't had any, any, any um, cars or other cyclists um, um, being angry at me for, for this kind of yeah. display. They, it, they seem to be delighted about it. I don't know how they could possibly be angry with you, Walter. <laughs> You're lovely. Thanks very much for your research. Okay. No Thank you for having me. Lovely to meet you. Walter Welmick from RMIT. And you can check that out on a website called Exertion Games if you want to see what's happening with those wonderful little helmets.